Here's the breakdown with Justin Hunt of Hip Hop DX. Justin, what's up, though? Jude, what's going on, brother? Shit, chilling, man. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing wonderful, man. Doing wonderful. All right, we had the fucking great Kendrick Lamar debate. Is he is he the goat? Correct. Uh, the funny thing is, I said no. You were not committal. Um, I I said that. I believe that if someone came up to me and said he was a goat, I wouldn't agree, but I'd understand. Like, I think he's right there. I think he's right there. And I said it's early. You said it's early. I said it's early. Um, let's, and then it was like a few days later, and I'm like, that was cool, but what makes the GOAT? We're having this, we're, what makes the greatest rapper of all time? Right. Greatest of all time. What, do we even have parameters? Like what? What are what are the standards? What are what are we what are what are we looking for in the goat? So I sat down. I I wrote down some shit. You got some ideas, and we're just gonna fucking brainstorm on what makes the goat. If y'all want to call up, call up, and not not to pound on this one, but of all time. So for, to me, it takes fucking time. Like that was my main fuck. That was my main knock on that shit. Y'all a little bit premature see i don't think time is the most important thing i think it's a consideration but yes. i don't think it takes much longer than four or five albums and history tells me that i i but i mean it but not four or five albums it's how do those albums hold up sure how did that how do those albums uh influence other rappers Correct, and I don't think that you need fifteen years, twenty years to be able to see that. I don't think that's maybe even ten. ten maybe ten. I, I you, need you need another ten. generation. I don't think we were sitting around saying, you know, uh, after Me Against the World, All Eyes on Me, and Machiavelli. I don't think we were actually saying, let's wait five, ten years to see how good these albums are. Okay, you know? and so that's where my basis for time sits, because generally speaking, when I think about a goat, when I think about contenders for the greatest of all time i'm thinking about cultural relevance right i'm thinking about rappers who they inspired or trends they started or styles they created that are impactful within the hip-hop community within in, within or outside of here's something else that you got to consider uh when rap rap was a subculture now it is a pop culture rap is pop now that's why i don't fucking listen to rap no that's why I don't listen to rap. It's not because I don't know rap. It's because I do know rap, and I've seen rap turn into pop. So, if you have, if you can reach more people, you will have a better chance of being being more culturally relevant. That's the one point that I agree with you on when you talk about how this is a generation that is lower in terms of quality MC and talent pool is just lower. And I think part of that, the reason why there's this perception that this generation is just lower overall in talent is because of the fact that rap is pop culture. So general population doesn't have the same understanding of the tenets or covenants. I don't think that subtracts from the top tier cats. I think, I, I think you know, Kendrick is, stands out in any period. For example, Chance the Rapper stands out in most periods, probably any period. Probably any period. But He's we, still on the early side. But see, that's that's but the thing don't, we don't know. That's the thing we don't know. And, and it's it's easier to be more culturally relevant in a in a time when I go to a when I go to a sporting event and rap is being played before that sporting event at a fucking baseball game. When rap dropped, that shit was unfucking heard of. So to me, like, yo, it's it was harder for Pac to be transcendent than for a rapper now to be transcendent. You have soccer moms listening to rap. I think a lot of soccer moms listen to Vanilla Ice, right? I saw Ice Ice Baby everywhere. But Ice Ice Baby wasn't revered within hip-hop. So popularity to me isn't necessarily the same thing as cultural relevance when I let's, look at it. Let's, uh, let's keep this up. I think, I think to me one of the main things, the main things is uh, in, in a greatest of all time MC – is being innovative. I remember there was a couple albums. I remember I remember the first time I heard Eminem's album. I remember the first time I heard fucking Outkast's album. Uh th those are two off the top of my head where I'm sitting there like god damn, I've never heard anything like this. 
Like, and the 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 and this is this is where the old heads have the fucking advantage because we were in a world before Eminem. We were in a world before Rockem. We were in a world before Outkast. We're in a world before Ghetto Boys and NWA. So we knew what it was like before then, and we and then you cats coming afterwards. They're in that post world. They don't even understand. They don't get what these motherfuckers brought to the game. Right, and I feel like that's be, I feel like that's grossly undervalued by the young cats. Yeah, I think yeah. Look, if, look. If, if if people don't have enough information, it's hard for them to make wise decisions. Right. I still find artists and projects that come out now that I haven't heard before. Right. There are few projects that come out where I'm like, word, I haven't heard this. This is fresh. This is fresh. Right. Um, and then there's a lot of projects that sound referential. Like, I, I love J. Cole. I think J. Cole's incredible. I love everything that he does uh, for the culture. I love that he's marching. I love his messages. I feel like I've kind of been listening to J. Cole-type rap albums for a long time. I mean, but, like, to your point, you said Chance the Rapper. Like, when I heard Chance on with uh, doing doing the shit with Action Bronson, I said, that's that's an old, that's an Eminem verse that he didn't use in fucking 98. Like, that was, that was that's all I heard. That yeah. was, like, that was... That was when he be. That's when he became Slim Shady. Yeah, you know, I mean, like these. <clears throat> so a lot of this shit, like that's what I mean. Like cats are blown away. Like, but yeah. they. What I guess the, the, it's this. Who do you give more credit to? The guy that the the guy that figured out how to fly the airplane, or the guy that figured out how to do the loop de loop. The guy that the guy that figured out the first crossover, or the guy that can do the crossover better, because it's it's harder to figure out that first crossover. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, and that's that's my main shit. It's like that's why I really value innovativeness in hip hop. Uh, what, what, Innovation is, is is definitely important. I also look at critical acclaim. Right, critical See, acclaim is another thing that is important. That's where you and I totally differ. So so I would love to hear I would love to hear your opinion on critical critical acclaim i think when we start looking at goat again greatest of all time right that's that's across a lot of different categories and it's very difficult for someone to be the goat if no one really respects them or if their music isn't celebrated or if the and critical acclaim doesn't necessarily come from just from publications it's from other mcs it's from other experts in the field how many classic albums are perfect albums and artists have what well, classic albums and perfect albums are decided by the writers who are usually on the coast which there's i'm just saying there's a bias there is it is it fair to say that there's a bias there was a bias in the 90s yes i don't think there's a bias anymore i think, I think there's people writing everywhere right maybe now. but even those people that are writing were st were affected by the bias like it's it's like it's the you drop the fucking pebble and the rings go in the fucking water like it's not you you can't, it's hard to get away from that cultural bias Hip hop it's, was started in, in the east, on, on the east, you're and it was embraced by the, the bro, embraced by the coast you're first. You're from so, down you know. south. How, remember, what was but, that like having every having most of your albums just totally dismissed by the source? The one that got me was East ninety nine Eternal. They gave that one three and a half mics. Now we're talking innovation. That's a classic. It's a classic. No one was doing that. They was shit on Big Mike's first album. That motherfucker was a goddamn banger. And and the thing is, is like. These some of these albums that I'm even referencing, the people that are they don't even know about the fucking albums because they're forgotten. Right. Like Ball and G, Ball and G's first fucking album it was a banger. These cats, the East Coast, it took them forever to figure out UGK. Like UGK had been out for ten years by the time they started getting some shine. So it's hard for me to fucking give it up to fucking. Uh, well well, one th what the critics say. One thing I want to again, it's not just critics; it's other MCs, it's I give, other I give it, it's but producers. I give, but, but I, I give more credit to those than, than critics. That's what I'm saying. Well, all that is still critical acclaim, right? If you have the respect of your peers, you have the respect of, of the media. But one thing I do give publications credit for is they will go back and re-review albums that they've gotten wrong. We've seen College Dropout go back and get a five over time. We've seen The Chronic go back and get a five over time. So even if they might not be immediately correct in that vacuum or within their own biases, over time, they generally go back and get those albums correct, especially when it, for the albums that are outside of uh, LA and New York specifically. So I include that. Do they go back and be like, hey, that Big Al album was kind of a piece of shit? Do they go back and say that shit? Do they go back and say that, hey, man, we're kind of fucking, we really, 
we were really on the fucking hype train of that. And uh, 10 years later, it's not holding up that well. But see, that's when it gets dicey, right? That's that's one. The, those are the moments where we have to downgrade the golden era. We have to downgrade the 90s, which uh, yeah. is fine. But you know, there's a lot of old heads who sit there and talk about everything in the 90s like it was just solid gold like Stevie Wonder. And no, it's dude. those kind of moments that really skew the way look, we man, look at this. Hey, look, I I had an old mixtape that I've just found from fucking from the mid '90s, and some of that shit was unlistenable. Some of it was unlistenable. I'm not saying that like every MC was was dope in the fucking '90s, but I am going to say it was the fucking golden era of innovation. Just because we were younger, we we're coming up with different ways to do shit. I remember when the I first came out, like it really cats really had to bend their ear to listen to that. It was, it's easy to come out with something that that apes Aquemini or that mocks Aquemini, because Aquemini already broke down that wall. They had a seven minute long fucking drugged out spodiody dope delicious. Uh, like no one was doing that. The best horns ever. Yeah, it was like this fucking funk. It was like a funkadelic reference fucking hip hop track with the ill fucking horns on that shit all drugged out like nobody was doing that until then D- nobody not in rap dude not in rap there not we in, go not there in, we go not in, in and here's the other thing the way we listen to rap back in the day when you listen to rap that's all you fucking listen to so like what they were doing was kind of groundbreaking Absolutely. And I do think that we can't underplay the disadvantage artists have now. Granted, we have the Internet. This right? Is this true. is why I say things like cultural relevance and commercial success do add value right now, because anybody can put anything out on the Internet right now. So we don't know. There's probably a million super innovative projects that nobody ever really hears. But everything since post-1996 Telecommunications Act, we had consolidation in the space. So there weren't, there's less labels and less radio stations, and they're owned by fewer people. So it made it uh, an environment where you, you sold clones all day long. So it's extremely difficult for someone who's even close to innovative to even get a look right now. And yeah, I that agree is a with huge you. thing. I agree with you, and still, and even the people that we're talking about are backed by major labels, dog. And exactly. Even if, even if they act like they're fucking like Justin and I know this shit, all these fucking so-called independent rappers are pushed by major agents and major managers that are attached to major fucking labels. It's all a ruse. You guys think that you're buying some fucking underground shit? No, you're buying some mainstream shit that's been packaged like it's underground. You're not part of a movement. You are supporting the mark. You're supporting a marketing. That's Right, and exactly, and so even in that environment, when you have an album that's innovative, and you have it with messaging, and it's diverse, for that to even get through, it's almost a miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle to get an album like "Damn." Here's it's a, here, a miracle. All right, so so uh, th- that is funny. You, I, my favorite thing is innovation. One of your favorite things is fucking critical acclaim, cultural relevance, and critical, critical acclaim. acclaim. Yes, and. Um, Here's here's one that uh, we're skipping is lyrical skill. Like, can the motherfucker spit? That's extremely important. Can they fucking spit? Can they get on that beat? Did they come up with a new way? Did they come up with new rhyme patterns? Right. Uh, I goddamn, I hate to quit keep like fucking M did to me E four. That's why I love E forty. Cats shit on me for liking E forty. Yo, his he's got some really very interesting rhyme patterns. M was doing that shit. Twister was flipping. Right. Cool G Rap was one of the first flippers. Like. I feel like, yo, dude, you gotta fucking, you gotta re- recognize that shit. Or even in, uh, even if you look at Rock M and Slick Rick, they they introduced a kind of a conversational way of rapping because back in the day, before it was them, it was like, I'm on the mic, I'm not a dyke, like that type of shit. Like it was more, it was like this, it was like chant and call and response. And I went they, to the hat store and got a new hat. Yeah, exactly. And, and it was like these. These are these are these are innovations in in lyricism that have been introduced and have been mocked, and some of them been mocked so much that it's just become the standard. When I think about critical acclaim and cultural relevance again, those are the things that garner critical acclaim. Those are things that garner cultural re- relevance. These are things that people copy because Bro, they hadn't happened before. Here's the real talk, man. I said I hang out with rich white motherfuckers. They still don't know how to. Uh, pronounce rock him so like they they're not he's not getting fucking he's not getting the critical acclaim that you think they're like yeah i like rakim like no dude it's rock him dog like yeah you, you know i'm speaking from a hip-hop standpoint yeah, and, and, I, and i get to and, I, and i'm going out into the world and okay. like i'm just saying like i don't feel like they're getting 
they're getting their what they deserve either you know um so all right so what what's your rebut to that or do you want to add to the lyrical skill look this is a hip-hop conversation hip-hop has now swallowed the world right now it's now it's popular everywhere right so people who don't know how to pronounce Rock Him, they still know the theme song to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? Yeah. And over time, people have become more knowledgeable outside of the core community of hip-hop. But I don't definitely don't think it's fair to sit here and, and say that we're going to base Rock Him's cultural relevance at his time versus Drake's at this time. I think that we have to keep it to a hip-hop context in that. I don't think it's fair to sit here and just figure out what, what people at Whole Foods thought about And that, Well, that was kind of my point about the earlier shit. Uh, rap being pop, it's easier to be more fucking more relevant. Right, exactly. Uh, but again, cultural relevance, though. Like, again, this is what other rappers are saying. This is what trends they inspire. This is what's happening in the music after them. These are like, when you talk about Outkast, right? Like, like Outkast, uh, they never came out with a different, they never came out with the same album twice. Nope. At bare minimum. Nope. They never came out with the same album twice. Nope. Right? So we can say Kendrick Lamar is inspired by Outkast because he doesn't come out with the same album twice, for example. So that would be a knock against Kendrick in that conversation. And that was, because, ki- and that was for me, like, a like for me, like, dude, it's not like I've never heard Kendrick um, I'm just not super familiar. I don't know his library inside and out, but the shit I hear is just like, yeah, it's dope, but right. it's not. Or you, it, I, yeah, I've heard that. Like, I, it's dope. He's doing he's doing dope shit, but it's not like, oh, bro, I never heard anything like that. Or even an artist like Kanye West, right? Kanye West largely makes different albums. You can make an argument that the, the late registration and uh, graduation are very similar. You can make an argument, but they don't sound like 808s and they don't sound like Yeezus. Here's something else though, on Kanye West that's not brought up. I had Kanye had me go fucking talk shit on one of his songs. And I remember, yeah, this was back in the day, never even made the fucking, I remember in my head, I was like, man, this, man I was thinking like, he's the beats are good, I hope he gets better at rapping. I swear to God, because I wasn't used to his rhyme style. And then once he came out and he came out, he came out and he's been out for a few years. I was like, oh, he got better at rapping. And I went back and listened to that song. No, he didn't. I just got used to his fucking rhyme style. He was doing something that nobody else was doing. And and then if you listen, if you listen past Kanye, everybody, everybody uses his cadence. Everybody's on Kanye's rhyme style. So like I got to like. I got to give fucking credit to Kanye for fucking blazing a rhyme style that wasn't there before, dude. He reminds me a lot of like Mace. Like Mace's Harlem World had a lot of uh, uh, Kanye-isms in it. But Kanye was so witty and his perspective was different. Yep. He was producing uh, with different production at that point. And, and he's never been afraid to be something different the next time out. Regardless of which friends he needed to hang out with to get inspired, 808 does not sound like late registration and mace reminded me of fucking eric sermon like when he can't like so yo we play this game forever this is what i brought this is where i got last time i'm like are we we going back to we going back to grandmaster cas on everything i think but that's the but i think i we go back to scarface on everything if we're going to call something the greatest we have to be we have to be familiar with the we have to be familiar with every like you can't yes you can't agree I can't just know this generation and be like, he's the greatest ever, and I don't know fucking Scarface's right. library. I don't know God, I don't know God, uh, Rakim's library. I don't know Big Daddy Kane's library. I don't understand Karis One's relevance. I don't understand fucking uh, Bun B and UGK. <laughs> like, you, I don't know about. I didn't hear the first three Outkast albums. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't hear the first two M albums. Right. Like you can't say who's the greatest and not know all of this shit. That's all I'm saying. Well, here's the, here's the controversial one that I consider, right. and it's not something that I think of when I think about how good someone is, but I do consider commercial success because I don't have a great of any generation that hasn't been commercially successful either in the singles era or the albums era or now the single streaming era we're in. Everyone that everyone ever talked about, there was commercial success there. Rakim was first million dollar deal. Commercial success. NWA, commercial success. No matter who we're talking about, generally speaking, the ones that come up the most consistently have also been able to move people to reach into their pocketbook. That's power. A lot of those people have good publicists too. So like let's not let's not forget about that. And here's someone else that we totally that we forgot about is Cube. Like this motherfucker, NWA, Ghost wrote a gang of shit for NWA, came out, then had fucking two back to back classics and fucking kill it will to EP. Like, yo, dude, like this guy was fucking on fire, dog. Like And he wrote all the Fridays. 
Yeah, the guy's a fucking monster. Like I And he wrote he wrote Easy E's yeah. album. <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking him and DLC like yo right. the fucking beast. I mean shit, like even yo, DLC, if you ain't get that in that car wreck, like that motherfucker could spit. You know, like we never fucking know. I I I hear what you're saying about commercial res- success. It's important. I it's important. It's, it's not. Look, I don't think it's, it weighs more than other categories. But the, I think it. I think once you get to the point you're talking about super MCs who don't sell records, you're dangerously close to talking about super MCs who people don't know, and that's dangerously close to just talking about guys you really like a whole lot and you wish they got named more often. I hear you, but there's also there's also hip hop came at this time that it that the people growing up on it loved hip hop and maybe it was maybe they weren't fucking commercially big and they I want to I I would like to see I would like to talk to all the MCs who was like I'm like who who inspired you you talk to face he's, he says the fucking super old school rappers I, I um you, you know and then you talk to I, I, I bet you dollars of donuts uh Biggie likes Slick Rick you know what I mean cause that, that's a storytelling motherfucker they both G-rap. tell stories and G-Rap like I wanna know I think I think I wanna know who the greats are inspired by like that's I, that's interesting to me cause to me that the problem I have with commercial success and fucking critical acclaim and fucking using analytics to judge art is just you're, you're using analytics to judge art you're using numbers to judge art i don't think that just because someone sells the most records makes them the best or makes them necessarily better than anyone else you just saying he has to sell some i i don't know a goat i don't know anyone's i don't i don't i don't have an experience of any era of rap where the person that people either thought was the goat or referenced the most or the people they were debating whether it was between had a problem selling records i don't remember i don't have that era and even if it, and I'm saying this again, within, within their era. So like, yeah, there weren't million, there weren't platinum albums in the '80s in the same consistency, right? There was more of a singles era in the '80s. But Slick Rick and Rakim, they didn't necessarily have problems moving singles. Yeah, yeah. And Chris they, didn't have problems moving singles. They were, they were the biggest for for how small rap was. They were the biggest at that time. Exactly. Here's something that I think is fucking huge that hasn't been discussed. Is fucking emotional depth and emotional vulnerability, um, and th- for this is a tough one because this one was introduced a, at least emotional, at least being vulnerable was introduced a little bit further down the line because rap was all I'm bragging, I'm this, I'm that, um, and then you you'd see rappers like Pac, you'd see rappers like Face, um, Eminem was v- uh, self deprecating. Jay Z had moments of fucking uh, being emotionally vulnerable, even right. if I felt like it was a bit like manipulative. Uh, you know, these are. I think that's important for rap because it's got, like Pac. The thing that I thought was beautiful about Pac, Justin, is that Pac could make rap for gangsters that wasn't gangster rap. Right. Um, Face did gangster rap with fucking like where he's talking about one, you know, uh, you know being emotionally vulnerable like that was that that wasn't this is that was new at the time we have a great quote from chris rock that we want to play he talks about scarface in a very similar way he makes what he makes a point here i think is interesting for this conversation all right let's let's, let's, let's play it yeah let's jump into it you got the you got the link john i don't have shit there's john shit in the bed why don't you just take your pants it was, down? It was, it's the first cut, right? Just take your pants down. I was uh, on the this, phone. this is the take one with uh, this, this, the, the, the John was on the Chris, phone. Chris Rock on Scarface. It's Chris, Chris pizza? Rock on Scarface. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Fucking dick. The next one. That's the, the other one, yeah, John. The next one. Leave this one. Leave that in. <laughs> yeah, this one right here. For three, I go with Scarface. Scarface, most influential. There is no Jay Z without Scarface. Hit pause. Hold on one Jay-Z. second. Hit pause. Is a bunch of fucking dumbasses nodding like uh huh, and they don't know is they don't know that they don't even know Face's catalog. Those people don't even know Face's fucking catalog. That's I a, bet that's you a, that's a powerhouse room, and I'm pretty sure they know Face's catalog. I bet you they don't. Uh, I bet you they fucking are, don't. Those are some of the most powerful people in in hip hop media. I'm pretty sure they know his catalog. That's <clears throat> that's my problem with the some of the most powerful people in hip hop media are probably not as familiar with Face's catalog as I am. Well, congratulations. 
folks. Thank you. I win. <laughs> I beat that guy. I beat that guy. I beat that that's, guy. That's He's da- all New Yorkers, dude. Daytuan Thomas. Who is that? Angie Martinez. Dog. Sitting there. <laughs> where are they from? Where are they from? It's Justin, a, where are they a, from? It's a room full of... It doesn't mean... It doesn't, where are they from, Justin? Just because you're from New York doesn't they mean not you don't know They're not experiencing it. They're not experiencing face like that. That's what I'm saying. Chris Rock makes a great point. I, wait, let, I know. I cut off... I'm, I literally fucking stopped him from getting my back to fucking shit on stri- people that I don't even know. <laughs> you gotta let those regions go, man. Because I'm a dick. I, everybody's, ba- on, everybody's on the internet now, Drew. Bring it back to the top. Number three, I go with Scarface. Scarface, most influential. There is no Jay-Z without Scarface. Jay-Z and Biggie are two Brooklyn cats that were just listening to the Scarface album and put a little more shine on it. Okay? Okay? Oh, we great point. These are <clears throat> that, great point. That's what that's those are those are the noises I make when someone's telling me something I don't I can't do. Oh, yeah. 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 They couldn't co-sign and they couldn't fucking fight it, huh? Huh? I think it was just a polite room. Everyone was getting a chance to speak. The diary, last of a dying breed. Right. The fix the made, fix. and the fix is the one that came out late. Like that was later in his career. That was like that was, his fifth album. I that think. was eleven Good. years after fucking his first, and that was and that, that was away from the Ghetto Boys and that projects. Was, that, and that was yeah, that was pre gripping on another level. That that the fix project caught hip hop by surprise in a number of ways. One, it was only it was it was the only project that had Jay Z and Nas on it while they were in the middle of their beef or while they're still going back and, and it forth. had Kanye production. Had Kanye production on yep. it. And Face steals the whole show. The whole show. One of my favorite albums of all time. Uh and Face is uh, uh the 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 face joint off of fucking the dynasty shit or uh where they he's talking about he's talking about his homeboy's right. child passing man like right. yo dude like and I think Face and Pac are able really are able to be poignant they're able to they're able to make you feel a lot in a limited amount of bars and I and I and, I, and yo, M, M does that too M, M does, does that incredibly yo, well a lot yo you could be real fucking clever with a thesaurus like anybody can flip words with a thesaurus but like can you make a mother can can you punch a motherfucker in their heart with a line I want to I want to make one point this is why longevity to me is lesser than right okay so when I look back I started looking at artists who people consistently think of or mention as the goat right and I look back at when they either started calling themselves the GOAT or when other people started calling them the GOAT. Biggie had three discs. Three discs. And Diddy was like, Biggie's the greatest to ever do it. The guy selling him said he's the best. This, this, this is marketing. Jay-Z. Jay-Z on the blueprint, he says, and if I ain't better, better than Big, I'm the closest one. That was his sixth album. Mm. LL Cool J named his eighth album GOAT. GOAT, yeah. Lil Wayne had Best Rapper Alive on his fifth album, The Carter Two. Kanye called himself the GOAT on Gorgeous on My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, his fifth album. Eminem on Say What You Say on Eminem's show. He said, I joke when I say I'm the best in the booth, but a lot of truth is said in jest. That was on Eminem's show. And then he has an unreleased song called I'm a GOAT. It's called GOAT. He goes, I'm a GOAT. It's incredible. This is early in people's careers. This isn't like, hey, we've been out for decades. Yes. Outside of LL Cool J, none of these cats had been around that long and before swear, they either garnered the accolades or claimed the accolades. Yeah. I don't know if longevity or time makes that big of a difference. I th- I've, what I mean is, how does it hold up against time? You know what I mean? Like, and I think, look, I think. Did we know that at these, this point in these artists' careers? I don't. I know a lot I, of people. When Eminem said that, I was like, "Yo, he might, he might actually be." Like, I was like, "Yo, the things that he has done on those first three projects on the Slim Shady LP, Marshall Mather LP, and, and the Eminem show was that impressive?" No, it, look, I like cats weren't doing that. There was there was a, there was a certain amount of fucking being funny, lyrical prowess, uh, self self deprecation. 
um, and just being able to eat a motherfucker up too at the same damn time. He was like, I'll clown me worse than you'll clown me and then I'll kill you worse than you've ever been killed. Like that's kind of, that's a nice little gift. Lil Wayne on the Carter 2. I was a Wayne hater. I thought Wayne was the weakest member of the Hot Boys for years. I used to love hating on Lil Wayne. Then he went on this mixtape run and the Carter 2 has got songs like Shooter on it where he's sticking up for the entire South. Your point, talking about things like stop being rapper racist, region haters, spectators, dictators, behind doors dictators. It's outrageous. Like, yeah. At that point, I was like, you know, Wayne, Wayne might have a point. He yeah. might actually be the best rapper of all time. It didn't take a whole lot of time to understand the value or the incredible art that is ours. You're saying, I, I didn't need look, man, I, I'm not some say, things you can see in the yeah, moment. You can say it, but then I'm not mad at people for saying I'm the best when they're the fucking they're at the peak in their fucking career because well, that's usually when you are. Well, here's but, another guy. There's one more. This guy named Drake. Last name you ever. Fucking first hate, name. You, he just now you're gonna shit I didn't on believe Drake. him. I yeah. did not believe him. I did not believe, I still don't believe him, but I didn't believe him because there's a lot of things, all these things you're talking about, innovation, lyrical skill, new styles and flows, picking up all this, telling stories, third person, first person. So how many things can you take off of some, someone's I'm a, list? I'm going to kill you with your own argument. And the only thing left is commercial success. That's the only thing left. That's why commercial success is only is only valuable this, when these other things are The there. stuff that you like, fucking critical critical acclaim Drake gets. No, selling, he doesn't get critical acclaim. He doesn't get critical acclaim? He hasn't acclaim? had one classic album, one Revere classic album. He has, He's got fucking what? I don't even know what they're I don't even look what. The critics shit on him? Yo, consistently. They really? show this every time out. Yeah. All right, I take it back. Yeah, he doesn't have critical I, I He's got hit back. records. I He's got a back. ton of hit records. He doesn't have critical claim. Like really? This, his take Why wouldn't he? So it? far gone is his most revered project or pick, highest rated project. Yo, he picks really good beats, dude. Yeah, like, but he puts together really uh, bloated projects. So oh. there's a lot of skippable tracks on there. That plays into your ability to put together a body of work or an art piece or to tell something that's bigger than yourself. He's got hits out the wazoo. Who's it, in, your, in your opinion, who's the most overrated rapper? Drake. Drake's the most overrated rapper. Easy. By who? You just told me the critics don't like him. Oh, in general. Well, I think, I think, we're, well, I think right now we're in a place where if you've got big songs, hit songs, that's all that matters. I would think we're in a playlist culture, so the album itself it means less. I'm an album dude. So I'm not necessarily impressed by people who can just drop singles, popular songs all day, especially in this era, to your point, where you have more people who just hear a rap song at the Super Bowl and now they're a fan. I don't necessarily think about that in the same way when I think about the greats. And so when I hear artists like that talk about how much they did or didn't do and how much how big they are, but they can't hold they can't keep me from pressing skip five times on a playlist. What are we really talking about? Let's play a song and take some phone calls. This is where we open up the phone lines, let you guys get in. Man, we got a gang of people that want to uh, that want to weigh in. Call us up right now, 888-742-3345. Let's go to uh, MJ in Chicago. MJ, what do you want to say? Man, first of all, I'm with you, Jude, on the critical acclaim because a lot of these critics are digital age critics, and they didn't live it. They just heard about it. And on top of all that, you can't be the greatest of all time if we can tell the story of hip hop without you. And there's a lot of artists that are good. <laughs> wow. That's a great way to look <laughs> at it. Yeah. Of, that's a great at the point. End of the day, if we can, if, if we're just gonna write a story about hip hop, we can leave a lot of these so called top rappers completely out of it. Wow. I never that's, the, that's yeah. a great way to say it. We'll say, uh, yeah, it. you can't tell the story of hip hop without Big. You can tell it without Soldier Boy, but you can't tell it without Big. And another guy that y'all didn't mention, Hammer. You talk about influence and what he was able to do outside the music industry through his failures as well as his success. You kind of have to put him in there. He was he. It was unfortunate for Hammer. He got so much. He got so much blowback on um, from like rap heads. But his first album, like motherfuckers from where I'm from, was, was fucking true. with him, man. He had a yeah, little was, troop was outfit. True. Like, he was crushing shit. He was dissing New York. Like, we was like, yeah. And he had that song Pray before Kanye had Jesus Walks. Yeah. Exactly. That was a hit. It was absolutely a monster. Doing gospel rap. And a lot right. of digital age guys, they don't know that because they weren't there. They're fresh out of college, and they're just going back and listening to it. No, it's kind of one of those things where we also are juxtaposing eras. So, and that's important because if, your mindset is this era, 
you're going to put a lot of era guys in the argument, but this era is not the best era. Th- so that if was, you weren't around in look, the golden age to feel it, it look, you're, you're going to be off either way. I was trying to make that argument last time. and cats, Look, here's the deal. Like, th- th- to his point, it's and I think it's like we don't understand. I think a lot of cats don't understand the significance of the rapper because they're coming post that rapper. They weren't, not to like hammer on this shit, like they weren't. They didn't know rap before, like, a, a pre-far side rap. You know what I mean? Like, no one was doing it like them, and then everybody came and filed. You know, like, it's easy to fucking dismiss an MC when 10 other MCs already bid his style and you're kind of bored with the shit. But, like, yo, dude, like, that guy fucking started something different. Right. It's like Napster, right? You know, like, yeah, anybody ever talks drunk about Napster should punch themselves in the face because we don't have none of these streaming platforms if yeah. it's not without Napster. Yeah, it's like shitting on MySpace. And like, why are you fucking, while you uh, posting your uh, political thoughts on Facebook? <laughs> right. Like, fuck right. out of here, dude. While your Twitter feed is starting to kind of look like a MySpace feed these days. Let's go to uh, Two Fly Eli. Yo. Two, what up, dog, man? Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Oh, man, look, man, I was there from the beginning. You know what I mean? I started listening to rap in the 80s, and I watched it evolve. There is no way any of these dudes rapping now can be considered great. They don't even got to rap now. It's all about the beats now. That's not you true. You know what I mean? Kendrick when Rock and them was doing right anything, now. there wasn't no beats. It was a break beat, maybe one sample. And you listen to the lyrics. Now don't nobody even listen to the lyrics. They just listen to the beat. A website called you Genius, know? Rap Genius, would disagree with you. All right, let's down there's, down there's uh, Mumble Rap, Mumble Rap, huh. being an MC from the 80s, Mumble Rap, making millions of dollars is an insult. Look, man, there was always di- there was always different dog. party raps. Like there was always party raps in every in every fucking in every every era. There was always a party rap. There just happens to yeah, be party rap, but usually there just happens party to be rap more wasn't considered party one rap. of the best no. MCs. I hear you. I hear you. I you tell you what I'm saying. And what? All right. I tell you this. I used to write down lyrics from Bone Thugs and Harmony, trying to figure out what they were saying. I definitely find myself uh, googling a rap genius and mumble rap lyrics more often than I feel like I probably should, just because I can't understand it. Are they saying cool shit once Sometimes. you Google it? Yeah, I mean, that depends on the artist. That's every, I, I that's know. I know. Like, thing. are they saying something fucking like meaningful? Sometimes. All right. Let's yeah. go to Black uh, Black Magic. Go ahead. My nigga Rude Jew. Hey, first of all, hey, if I got high five that nigga MJ from Chicago, that nigga hit it on the head when he said, hey, if they can tell the story rap without you, yada, yada, we don't need your ass. But I'm going to say this. Fucking art, the whole point of art is to be thought-provoking and fucking evoke a fucking emotional fucking reaction out of it. You can't really quantify that shit with a number and shit. But I'm going to say this. It ain't that nigga today. That niggas that lay their motherfucking life down for it, change their life, and, and and really mold themselves around the motherfucking lyrics. You, out of that list of niggas that you said called themselves the greatest of all time, Tupac never called himself the motherfucking greatest of all time with that rap shit. The nigga he called himself a revolutionary. Called him, he, he was just saying that big bit of style, this that, and the other. Everybody after him did his style. He he shifted the paradigm of how niggas rap. Why niggas was rapping, what they was doing when they was rapping. Everybody wanted to literally be him. When niggas wasn't trying to be the, the next rock king, even though they, they weren't like, they wasn't saying it like that. Niggas open out their mouth and say they want to be the next Tupac ever since him and shit like that. Not to be, I'm, I'm, you, you know, I'm from the Bay, nigga. I ain't trying to know West Coast bias. But when it turn, when, when it, when it comes to the shit of what, who had the most lasting impact, you can go around the world. Niggas was ready to cry for that nigga like Mike. Between Mike, Prince and Pop dying, niggas was like motherfuckers was crying like a family member died. If Jay Z died, we we'd be sad and shit like that. If Jay Z say pick up a gun and go take so and so out, one nigga might do it. If Pop <laughs> had said it, you got a motherfucking army behind you, bro. That that nigga Pop say some shit, nigga, everybody move. Not what? one or two niggas. These niggas nowadays can make you open your wallet. They say buy some Versace. Oh, you niggas might want to buy some Versace. That nigga Pop said do something, live your life like this. Everybody getting thug, getting random ass tattoos on their fucking stomach and shit like that. Niggas shaving their heads, wearing open Versace shirts, and they, you know what I'm saying, doing all kinds of shit. To me, in in the most mass motherfucking effect was that nigga. To, and, and, yeah. and in, you feel me? I'm gonna jump in. To, to, I I gotta agree with him as far as cultural significance. I don't think anything anything is bigger than Pac. And some cats might say his death was part of the reason. 
It might be, but that being said, it's still he still has that cultural significance. Like I, I dude is transcendent, bro. Like, we'll never see anything like Tupac. And Edi I mean pointed this out on uh, our breakdown on the Battle of the Tupac Alikes. This is when everybody was putting on bandanas. Everybody was like my man said, tatting tattoos on their belly. Yeah. Edi I mean from the Outlaws pointed out that. Pac had songs for dudes, he had songs for the women, he had uplifting songs, he had songs you wanted to party to, and he had uh um like social socially social, conscious social commentary. Right. Yeah, he had all those kinds of songs and made them all hit records. Like like I Dear agree. Mama was a hit record. You know, uh Keep Your Head Up was a hit record. I Get Around was a hit record. Two yeah. of America's most wanted. Hit record. So there's a lot of artists who can touch a lot of lanes. Pac was the one who did that and made them all hits. Let's go to Victor in the back. Go ahead, Victor. Hey, yo, what's up, fellas, man? Uh, I want to piggyback on some of the calls from what you guys said, man. Um, first of all, the East, the East Coast DJs are fucking dicks, man, because they never give West Coast any shine. So with that said, the longest rapper that's still relevant to now rapping is Too Short. The first rapper to ever hit Diamond was MC Hammer, the most talented rapper, the most talented rapper, in my opinion, is Ice Cube, because that motherfucker could write songs, he's a first ghostwriter, and he could write hit movies that people still can recite today, and the most talented group ever is N.W.A., because you broke those guys up, look what, uh, look what Dre did. Dre, Dre got broke off two times by Ruthless and by Death Row, and he's still about to be a billionaire. You know what, Jay-Z, man, let's not... You can't even say that. I, we we forgot about Wu Tang as far as most talented group. That's a motherfucker. That was another that they they uh if someone made an argument for Wu Tang, I would not fucking disagree. You still got Ghost that's killing that shit. Um, Dan, everybody's first solo record was a fucking classic. The first Wu uh, for for the most part, the first Wu was a game changer. It it. I remember listening. I remember getting that motherfucking "Protect Your Neck" single. That was another one of the moments, bro. Like I remember those moments where you buy the fucking single, or you get the tape, or the first time you hear that shit on the radio, and you're like, "I've never heard nothing like this," and because there was nothing like that until those dudes came along. And they all sound different. Yes, like they didn't sound like each other. They were like New York cats that were stuck on some fucking island somewhere, where you actually had to take a ferry to get in the fucking city. So they had this New York style, and they had their own weird fucking slang. They brought nerd shit. They made nerd shit popular. They're talking about fucking comic books and fucking kung fu. Like that shit wasn't fucking cool b- before them. You know, like nobody was like rapping fucking comics. <laughs> right. Like they were fucking. They were fucking weirdos that was just doing ill shit. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I I mean, like, they were just their own fucking deal, man. Yeah, man. I mean, and look, and and especially when I look at, like, Ray and Ghost. Ghostface specifically. Like... He, he, he kept going, dog. He kept going. He kept going for a very long time. And he's now... He's the one that's putting together the next Wu-Tang project. So he's going to be the one at the helm. And he... He's amazing at picking beats. He might be one of the be- he might have one of the best, best pair ears. of ears. Yeah, his ears are fucking awesome. Incredible. And like, and that was my main. Nas can spit his ass off, and to me, like, I'm like, God damn, Nas, just let someone else pick a beat for you, dog. Like, yo, I'd love to hear Nas bust on motherfucking. Uh, let Kanye pick some beats for his ass. Let Ghost pick some fucking beats for his ass. If you look at if you look at Elmatic, that was MC Search was touching a lot of those fucking beats. That was a, that was searchlight. That was searchlight shit, and, they, and he put together all of these fucking awesome, awesome producers. And that was th- those ill ass beats allowed fucking uh, Nas to open up. Yeah, I mean, and then that hadn't happened before. That was the first time you had the producer from other crews produce a project because everybody a rapper who wasn't be, in there. Everybody they all wanted to be a part of this dude because he was special. Underrated Ghostface album, Fish Scale. Never heard an album where somebody is chopping up fish scale, heroin, uh, getting their hair cut, uh, getting their ass beat by their mama, and has a, a swimming underwater and has a gun fall out of his pocket while he's trying to holler at a girl at a bus stop. That's diversity. Yeah, Ghost is the shit, and he's got longevity, which you fucking don't value as much as I do, but Ghost Ghost can say that. He keep he keeps coming out with fucking relevant shit. Um let's uh let's 888-742-3345. 888-742-3345. Um Rain says goat needs to be broken down by generations, and that just it's greatest of all time. Not of 
So Gog, greatest of all generation. Um, give me, give me some, give me some slap on MCs, Justin. Let's hear it. Uh, if we're talking about, and okay, so if we're taking out, if we're taking out commercial sales, I think it's a much more interesting conversation to me, right? Yeah. I think, I think MF Doom. If we're not talking goat convers, if we're talking goats, you got to love Doom. MF Doom. I do love Doom. It's the dude. First of all, it's Zev Love X from uh, KMD, Peach and the, Fuzz, and all that. You shit. know what I'm saying? Yeah. His career didn't work out. He was homeless for a while, put on a mask, created these characters that didn't exist, and became arguably what the art of emceeing was supposed to be, or, or, or pushed it forward, the art of emceeing. I'm talking about where you put in rhyme schemes and words, how you can pull people into different characters. Mad Villainy, incredible project, critically acclaimed. Uh, <clears throat> you look at Take Me to Your Leader, critically acclaimed, imp- incredible project. Danger Plus you Doom, got. amazing project. You gotta give Black Thought. Black Thought has gotta be in this conversation. Black Thought is slept on because He's not all wild. He's he's kind of like a reserved cat, and yeah. therefore he he seems to be slept on a bit. But yo, he that motherfucker can spit. Dude. It's incredible. I think too because he's in a group, he doesn't get enough credit. Now he's the primary MC. He's been the primary MC uh, in the Roots for a long time. The Roots has had a lot of different artists within their collective that have showed up on tracks, and he is he's extremely reserved. He's not uh, out, you know, uh, pumping his own chest. Every day, but Black Thought, he's been doing it for longer, and I don't know anybody who could spit live the way he can. Uh, we got a quote here. This is an interesting quote. We got this quote right here. This is from Quest Love. Speaking of Black Thought, here's Quest Love's top two MCs. I think both of these are right there. You, John, you got the, uh, you got the clip. Quest Love, the yeah, this one right here. Just put drummer of the Roots. You era absolutely unappreciated. Will Smith, yes. It's Will Smith, and they equal one rapper. Will Smith with DJ Jazzy Jeff. Absolutely. Are the most entertaining, as good together as Running Run D, better than the Outcast, better than Calm the Tribe. Calm down. Like, Calm those down. two guys. Woo! Number one. Pasta News from De La Soul is probably... I was right there. <laughs> Literally, I'm sitting here like... Saying someone has to mention pasta. Pasta news. news from De La Soul for me is criminally undervalued. Give me rapping on planes where the gangsters outdated. Fuck being hard. Pasta, pasta news, news is complicated. complicated. Yeah, like yeah, I agree. I think Pasta News is the another shit. Another one of those guys. Now here's, he's in a group. But I think when you're in a group, you don't get enough credit. You don't. Like Andre Three Thousand gets skipped. Yo, shit, Big Boy's a fucking beast in his own in his own right. Here's someone else that uh, needs to be mentioned. Q Tip did the fucking the bulk of the production on on their classic albums. Yeah. So like, as far as a rapper producer goes, he is a fucking monster. Same with goddamn um, Pimp C. Pimp C did a ton of fucking production on on their albums and he could spit and he fucking he raps about some real ass shit like high life go listen to high life here's something else that you might may or may not know go back and listen to the diary by scarface that motherfucker is playing his own instruments he's playing he's playing he's playing he's playing bass guitar on his own shit dude like to me i, I that adds value to me that adds value to me if you're if you're as an artist, maybe not as a rapper, but as an artist, I feel like that adds value to me. I want to shout out Matthew Scott on Twitter. He just had this to say about Q-Tip. Being smart and smooth without being degrading or overusing four-letter words. Tribe de la soul. He agrees. Yeah, those motherfuckers are the shit. Um, when you're in a group, it's more difficult for you to get the props you deserve as an MC because people look at your whole collective as the reason why you're successful. That's the thing that they always say about Andre 3000. They're like, well, he hasn't done a solo rap album. Well, he gave you the Love Below. How many rappers you see singing after the Love Below came out? I, I've, maybe because I'm a Detroiter, I just feel like Royce the 5'9 is ridiculously fucking um, undervalued. And, and, I th- and I think, I don't know, after Layers, I, I feel like he's... I feel like he's open. It used to be all about him spitting layers. Actually, showed him kind of like opening up, showing all like showing what was going on in his world. Yeah. And I and hopefully I would love for people to go check out that fucking layers shit. Layers Tabernacle Prime. That's yeah. an incredible three album stretch he's on right now. Yeah, he's not he's not doing too bad. He's in the zone right now. Um, let's go to eight 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 seven four two three three four five eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Uh, boom, 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 boom. brave. Yo, what's up, fellas? What up, though? 
Hey, I just want to say, man, yo, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the show, and I'm a big fan of your YouTube uh, vibration too, bro. You know I appreciate what I'm saying? It. I mean, you be, your breakdown is a shit. And when you came to the real Jew show, it's like, oh, damn, this shit is fly. But anyway, no dick riding. Anyway, I appreciate I, um, you. Listen, one of the one of the most underrated rappers I feel is Fonte from Little Brother. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the group itself is a little bit underrated, but Fonte to me, his lyricism, man, is just it's just mind blowing. Some of the different things that he that he you know, like, I can't think of the name of the, the jam off the top of my head, but he uh, he spit a rhyme. He was uh, talking about he was on some street shit, but the song ended up the the, the verse ended up being about him ripping out uh, Chrissy Cream. But the way that he rhymed made it seem like he was talking about being on, uh, like, swinging, uh, swinging hard on the street, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and then he did, and then he got this nomin gramination. Now he's doing big things for this. Uh, hey, he's supposed to be writing for this movie. I mean, this television show as well. He's just really, really underrated. That's what I just feel. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from North Carolina. I was born in Stanville, so I may have a little bit of a, a little you know, bit of bias. North Carolina yeah. bias. You don't get Drake without Fonte. The same way uh, my man's got a bit of. Fresh Prince bias man from Philly. <laughs> right. Look, and I'm not going to shit on Fresh Prince. He didn't put Black Thought as his number one, well, you know, interestingly. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep your fucking partner in check next to But, like, yo, and a lot of cats don't understand, like, yo, when when Fresh Prince, when Will, when they came out, man, they was doing some, like, ill shit. They had the Sanford the Sun beatbox yeah. joint. They were... Uh, they, they they were doing shit before parents just don't understand. And then he was able to hit with Summertime later on. I think Will Smith's one of the top ten storytellers. I mean, you look at Nightmare on My Street, I Think I Can Beat Mike Tyson, Parents Just Don't Understand, Just the Two of Us. Uh, he blew up the city of Miami in hip-hop. He's the first cat I ever heard outside of cats from Miami talk about Miami party life. I ain't listening to that shit. That shit was, I like Will. Uh, what I'm was that? going to Miami. That, that song's on the Big Willie Styles underrated. That's an underrated project. <laughs> I'm saying. All, All right, right, bro. I bought it at Best Buy. Oh, my God. Nine ninety nine. Uh, Mike in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. T.I. is a very underrated rapper. He might get accolades from all over the place, but he's underrated. You know, T.I. is one of the best rappers out there. Is he underrated if he's called the King of the South? He's called the King of the South, but you got to look at it. T.I. out rap. Have, I think he'll out rap Lil Wayne easy. As far as, I mean, bar for bar. And I think T.I. actually writes all his lyrics. I think he's probably underappreciated. I don't know if he's underrated. If you look at, like, cats from the South or cats from Atlanta specifically who've gotten, let's just look at Grammy nominations or consistently sell platinum records out of Atlanta since Outcast. After Outcast, you got Ludacris who won. You know who's probably underrated too, but Ludacris won for release therapy, and all the rest of those nominations went to Ti. I think Ti gets a lot of deserved credit. I don't think people think mm-hmm. about him as an MC first anymore. I think they think about him as like family hustle or like a like a right. Like a celebrity. I think they think of him more as a, a trap rapper, but Ti can tell a story. He can tell third person verses. Ti can go all the way around the board with the rap. He's great. You know who uh, kind of lost her luster, but was. Uh like kind of just doing really dope shit was DMX. He like his first few albums. He was doing some really interesting things. He had kind of dope concept albums. He, you know, doing the rapping back and forth in different voices. It, he wasn't the first one to do it, but he he continued on. And now you look at him like, all right, dude. Like he he's just always getting arrested. He's he's definitely on. Unfortunately, on the Mount Rushmore of rappers who always seem to be in jail. He had five number one records in a row. He was yeah, he was he was on some Grand monster Champ shit. Yeah, he was on number some, one. He was on some monster shit. When's yeah. the last time you listened to Grand Champ? I don't th- I don't uh, yeah. His fan base is sincere. But it's dark and hell is hot, bro. Yeah, like, man. come on, man. That's the one. Lupe Fiasco's an artist who's underrated. And I think Lupe Fiasco set the standard for what these modern young lyricists are even really getting a chance to do, especially from a backpack rap standpoint, especially from a, uh, he won a Grammy about a, about with a, for, for a song that's about a project building turning into a robot. Like that's the most complicated Grammy winning song I've ever heard of. He's, he can do every style and, and generally lives in these crazy metaphorical worlds. He doesn't get enough props, he deserves more props. Common got slapped on. I'm just kind of cruising through my fucking, uh, through my shit. Uh, you know who I wish I heard could hear more of. Who's like, look, I'm not saying he's the greatest or anything, but goddamn it, I just love Tash from the from the Alcoholics. Like, 
That guy used to make me smile so fucking much, dude. He's he he was one of the funniest, cleverest motherfuckers spitting, man. We're getting a lot of uh, people on on Twitter shouting out Atmosphere Slug from Atmosphere, bigger than guns, bigger than cigarettes. Boom. This guy's dope. Uh, and we'll end with Sean in Toronto. Hey, what's up, man? What up, though? No, okay, yo, you guys keep forgetting one guy, man. This guy is like the pinnacle. Literally, would smash everyone out there, and that's pun. Lyrically, no one can touch Big Pun. The guy was a monster. Pun was nice, but what do you mean he was? Uh, he was like G Rap to me. You. Pun and G Rap, like Pun was, Pun was him, Noriega, all G- that shit back in the day, man. That was Pun's like the shit, like, dude. Pun's the shit, but like I know, I know, he's just underrated as shit, man. It bothers me because no one ever brings the guy's name up. I think Pun, I think Pun was fifty fifty in his catalog. Unfortunately, when he passed away, like Capital Punishment, everyone really loved. Yeah, and but then the oh yeah, album, baby yep. shit. The and second look, album didn't really love. You know what? Much. You know what? Pun. You know what? Let me let me. Sean, be quiet. You know what? Pun used to really do was he would get on other people's shit and fucking murder, murder it. Him. Hit like Pun's guest star shit was bananas, dude. Like that shit where they were busting over the fucking um. Where they're busting over the 2001 Space Odyssey for samples, pun oh, kills that shit. Yeah. Like I, I get your back on that, but like as far as whole catalog, man. Ah. But that's what know. I'm saying though. With whole catalog, you can't say that the man didn't have. I just did, and then I put you on hold because I'm a dick. <laughs> There's that Jay in uh, Boston. I'm going to him because he's he, he's supporting one of my favorite MCs. Go ahead. Hey man, Big Mike, man, hands down, most underrated lyricism. In the game, man. Big Mike started Hands off with down. the convicts. He, uh, he he started off with the convicts on rap a lot. Then filled filled in for Willie D. And I thought that was a fucking awesome Ghetto Boys record uh, to oh, death. Oh man, was. and the, one of the best. And that in this album, <clears throat> something serious was was ridiculous. Something and then and that was kind of to my point. Something serious didn't even get a great fucking review. And something serious, if you go to like allmusic.com, they fucking shit on something serious, and that's the yeah. that's the problem I have with a lot of these people that are saying, telling me, telling me, someone like telling me what a classic is. These motherfuckers don't even know, like they're they're not even familiar with rap. Speaking on what the fucking classics are, that's the problem. Yeah. That's that's a not not you, Justin. But if you if you look at if you look at these other if you look at Rolling Stone or fucking All Music or these other places that that. People go to and they they give rap reviews. They they're not familiar with fucking rap to be speaking on the shit. That's that's what I got a problem with. That's all I'm saying. I think it's real difficult to like say that at professional music publications or even people who are passionate about rap to talk about their personal experience with it just because of where the t-shirt they're wearing or the banner that they're underneath. I, I just can't necessarily say that. I've read incredible reviews on obscure projects on places that you might not even consider sometimes. And look, man, and, and then sometimes I feel like they'll overvalue shit too because they don't know what the fuck they're talking. Like really, like someone really tried to say that fucking um, the Kendrick's last album was a Coltrane album. Like on NPR, they're trying to com- Say that that was the Coltrane. Look, no, John Coltrane is John Coltrane. Get get his fucking name out your mouth. Let that shit. Let that shit breathe. Are you tell? You're telling me that? Come on, bro. I think if they had said uh, more life or views or nothing was the same or any Drake project was Coltrane, that I might feel like you, bro. I Coltrane think, is fucking Coltrane, dog. And Kendrick is Kendrick. Exactly. He's so a let, generational. Let, let generational talent. N- generational. Of like he, once in a generation we'll have a Kendrick Lamar. He is not, once in a generation we had. He doesn't have the innovation of Coltrane, and that's where they differ. You didn't listen to this new album yet. Yeah, I did. I heard it. It was Outcast, Aquim and I fucking. That you, was the you album know. before. Oh, oh, exactly. See, hey, we talked about that. This is the one. What's this? this is this different. new one? That's this, this, is this is not the one they called Coltrane though. It was the. Oh, it's a bit of a butterfly. Yeah. Oh yeah, that makes sense. They pulled from the from all those influences. Yeah, well, you yeah. know. That's all my. That, I guess that's my problem. Coltrane has influences too, man. Oh my god! Do you mean you. to tell me Coltrane just popped out without listening to anything? He just. I can't even. No influences. I can't even. Let's just let's just walk <laughs> away right now. Justin Hunt, you can uh, you guys can watch this shit on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube on the uh, Hip Hop DX's YouTube channel. All right, there it is. 
And uh, check out the breakdown every Saturday as well. Uh, this week, not sure what we're talking about this week, but we had the final word on uh, Kendrick Lamar last week, so check that out if you missed it. Let's get it.